because our business rate is somewhat on the low side, we are using a greater of two at forty dollars per thousand. Uh, the final numbers on the bottom I'll draw your attention to below the pie charts. Um, looking at total uh, burden um, in 2011 for residential and business properties combined was 24% of the revenue for the municipality in 2011. By 2015, uh, those two properties were only paying 15.2% of the total tax revenue for, uh, for the district. Comparing uh, that information to uh, one of our closest neighbors here, the community of Chetwin, you'll also find a similar graph on page four of your agenda package. Uh, I won't dwell too, too much on this, but tax burden is a good measure of diversification for, or lack of, I guess, uh, for a municipality's revenue stream. So to compare the two, we can see that in 2015, uh, the District of Chetwind asked residents and business owners to pay a combined 56.6% of the total revenue for the municipality versus ours at 15.2. So um, I can tell you, honestly, Council, even this pie chart for Chetwind is somewhat unique across the province. We're very, very fortunate <coughs> up here in the north, as MLA Bernier alluded to, to have all of the industrial players that we do in a lot of municipalities elsewhere in the province. Um, that residential and business tax burden is upwards of 80%. Uh, you know, so um, we're very, very fortunate to be able to, to you know, generate the kind of revenue we do from our industrial partners. Uh, next, uh, uh, tax levies versus mill rates. And to help highlight the differences, I've created sort of a quick fictional example with three municipalities here, uh, municipality A, B, and C. So in the example, municipality A has a current year mill rate for class one residential <coughs> properties of five, five dollars per thousand. Municipality B has a mill rate of two dollar or two point five uh, for class one properties, and municipality C has a mill rate of one point five for residential properties. And the question to the example is why is municipality A overtaxing its residents by two times what municipality B is charging and over three times what municipality C is charging. Surely the residents of municipality A should consider moving to a cheaper town from a, from a taxation standpoint. If we dig a little deeper into the calculation, however, what appears to be the cheapest municipality focusing simply on mill rates actually isn't the case. So in municipality A, we can see that BC assessment has determined the average property value in that municipality to be $100,000, and the municipality looks to generate $500 per household from uh, each, each uh, roll number or each property within that class, so they require a mill rate of five to do so. Municipality B has a BC assessment determined average property value of 200, so to generate that same $500, or $500, they use a mill rate of 2.5. Municipality C, which initially appeared on the surface to be the cheapest municipality by a long shot, actually is the most expensive because according to BC assessment, that municipality is an affluent community with an average home value of $400,000 per home. Multiplied by a mill rate means that they actually pay the highest taxes in the region at $600 per household. What we can conclude over in the box on the right is that comparing only mill rates in the, you know, when setting uh, taxation levels provides no measurable comparison between uh, municipalities as mill rates on their own do not allow for any meaningful analysis. It's quite literally counsel the equivalent of someone asking you for your phone number and you providing them your area code wondering why they didn't call you three days later. That number by itself you can't do anything with it, you can't, you know, it's a meaningless number in and of itself. In the tax formula, you'll notice below, the uh, amount to be raised is actually what we're gonna look for council to set. We then take that amount to be raised, divide it by the average assessment amount, multiply it by a thousand, and we determine the mill rate as a result. So the mill rate is actually the end product of the whole taxation process, not one of the inputs to, uh, to determine the Uh, second last slide here. We all heard the uh, you know the information circulating in the papers a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago, I guess, talking about the significant property value declines in Tumba Ridge in, in 2016. I can confirm based on the information from BC assessment released on March 31st that those reports were accurate. 
we've seen uh, significant declines in property values across, across three of the major classes, being the uh, residential, uh, light industry, and uh, business. Although we've also seen significant increases in other two classes, being utilities and major industry. Interesting thing about that is if we go back to the slides on, the, on tax burden, the classes we've seen decline are actually the lowest revenue classes for the municipality. And the ones we've seen increase are where we draw the bulk of our taxation revenue from. So the net effect of that is that we're actually forecasting uh, a slightly larger tax revenue base this year than last year because the low paying classes declined, but the high paying classes uh, increased as well. Last slide here, Council, and uh, I'll draw your attention to that number at the bottom. I do apologize, this one's a little tricky to see. It's, the information is kind of small, but in a moment we'll be moving into uh, this sheet in the actual Excel spreadsheet to, to set the taxes. Uh, but this is the, uh, the template we'll be using. As I mentioned uh, earlier, last year's tax revenue was about $10.8 million. This year we're forecasting 2.2. If we simply leave tax rates or average levies exactly as they were for uh, last year, and that additional 366,000, as I mentioned, is purely a function of the assessment increases in our two uh, highest-paying uh, taxation classes. So, can you zoom in on that? Can you make that bigger on the screen? Yeah, I will, Councillor Howie. Okay. Not on this slide. Uh, Pardon me, but it will be moving into the Excel sheet in a moment, and it, it's much bigger, much more clear. And you guys will actually, all of these numbers in red here, or the area in red, Council has the opportunity to play with the rates here at, at that point. So this one was just sort of for information purposes here. But um, yeah, on that note, uh, that concludes my presentation, Council, and I'll turn it back over to uh, to your worship for uh, discussion. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Leggett for that presentation. So as Chris said, he's going to pull up the um, slide to allow council to, to go through. Uh, just like to thank my family for stopping in. Always nice to have guests. Uh, apologize to council for the um, distraction. I know tonight's a very serious meeting. I was not expecting them. Always happy to see them. Always happy to see them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look through it. Just so council knows, um, the recommendation that uh, the word <coughs> your worship has put on the floor would be to leave the average levy, so the amount paid by each uh, each average household the same. What that would mean as a net to the district of Tumbler Ridge would be plus three hundred thousand dollars in tax revenue. So if everything is left the same as last as last year, it will be plus three hundred thousand dollars to the district of Tumbler Ridge. But that is for council to debate today. And you have a motion on the floor, so we'll turn it back to council to uh, go from there. Okay. Council, what would you uh, would you like to get the chart up there so we can change around the tax rate to see what? <coughs> okay. Well, I'll break the ice here. Um, personally, guys, this is the way I look at it. We're doing a budget here, and budget is an estimate of an income and expenditure for a set period of time. This is a draft budget, right? We're not committed to anything here. Previous meeting, I felt like we were committed to something. Tried to have a discussion here. Nobody wants to have that discussion. Nobody wants to look at taking some money out here. So $1.1 million we collect on the residents. In my mind, this municipality is flush with cash. We don't need to collect as much money as we do. We had a roughly $5 million surplus from last year. This year we're talking about taking in another $300,000 that we weren't expecting to see. We did $450,000 in investment income from last year based on stuff that was generated through this council. And we just seen $2 million come in from the regional district as part of our budget. So what I would like to see is I'd like to see us do something really meaning for our residents. And I'd like to see us lower our tax rate for residential taxes to zero for this year going forward. This is a decrease of about $600 per household or per resident. It cost us $1.1 million to do it. But we are able to spend, without even blinking an eye at it, about a half a million dollars on tourism related things. Where my paper's gone here. $200,000 the, for the museum for tourists. 
$100,000 for the snowmobile club for a groomer for tourists. Chamber of Commerce increased the Vic operation, $160,000 there. Uh, JCP funding, $40,000. Grizzfest, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $90,000. That's almost $600,000. So to put this out on the floor, I'd like to see us put the tax rate for residential taxes to zero for a year going forward. I know we're going to be super unpopular when things turn around in the district of Tumbler Ridge and we try to increase it to get that $600 back. But when people are doing better in town, but they're not doing good in town. And this was something we can do to actually help people now. People that will live here, our residents, the people that paid taxes for 25 years in this town. People have been here all the time. Instead of constantly doing stuff for tourists that come in and out of our town. So that's where I want to throw that out. Thank you, Worship. I would ask if there is a specific motion to be placed on the floor. There's a motion on the floor for a zero vote increase. That's the motion? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk to uh, Councilor Carl's ask. And the one thing, if we go to a zero tax in Tumber Ridge, you can say goodbye to every grant that we even think of getting. They're good. The government's going to sit back and say, hey, you guys don't want to help yourself? We're not going to help you. Uh, these other things that we've done, uh, we listed them all out there. I think that's a progressive budget. We're, we're spending a few dollars from money we put away over the past few years for this type of thing. We're pushing this town in the right direction. We're doing something. We're not just sitting back on our laurels saying, geez, I hope coal prices go up. That, that, and to me, that is what you're asking us to do. Sit back and say, geez, I hope something changes. Because I am not going to do that. I didn't get put, I didn't run for this but the seat to do that. I want to see this town go ahead. And yeah, things might get tougher. And then, then maybe you're going to have to look at some big decisions. <coughs> I don't think I'd ever look at going to zero. <coughs> I just don't see that being an answer for anything. But uh, because, like you say, you're going to have a lot of enemies when you do have to bring it back. But I am, I am, I like this budget. I like the zero percent increase. I think people can live with that. They're budgeting for that right now. Um, hopefully there's more jobs. With some of the money we're going to be spending, we can we can um, build our, some of our, give some jobs out there. But um, with batting around, this is going to make, this might not be our worst year. So we, we better, uh, what do you think about that? And, and I think we are, the things we can affect, we are affecting. And, uh, I think we can. We are doing it right. And I'm really happy with this budget, and I hope the council is too. And I, I, a zero percent increase on taxes is, is a lot. There's a lot to be said for that. And it's what every community that I've discussed it with is trying to do this year because we are. That's where I come from. Anybody else? Council Guy. Um. <coughs> I'm going to ask a question on one of the, one of the specific classifications, and that's light industry. And uh, if I could maybe just get a, just get an explanation exactly what makes up light industry, because it's not what I originally thought. It's actually a lot of number companies and things like that. Is that possible to get a? Yeah, I'll turn it over to Mr. Leggett. Thank you, Mr. Wall, Your Worship. So the light industry uh, light industry category are businesses essentially that have graduated from the business category up into some type of industrial uh, industrial endeavor, I guess, if you will. In our municipality, that includes uh, some forestry properties. Uh, it includes some oil and natural gas wells, uh, although generally those of a non-producing nature. So the wells that we have around town that are tapped fall into the, uh, the class five light industry. Uh, we've also got a couple of pipelines in there. Um, there's not a ton of properties in that uh, in that category. We do have two local businesses that fall into the uh, the light industry category, but uh, for the most part, it's oil and natural gas companies and a couple of forestry properties and some of the, the mining support businesses. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yeah, and um, the the reason I brought that up is that. Um, <coughs> These are these are companies that are just kind of uh, they're, they're blind. They're they're out there to mention there. They 
really there's no contributing factor to town other than you see wet gas wells. It's uh, been put there once in, once upon a time, capped, as, as was mentioned. And same thing with Forest Street, that they don't attract a land to sit there paying taxes on, that they actually seen a pretty substantial decrease over the past uh, four years. Is that correct? Um, I'm going to put something uh, that, that I would like to see on the floor, and that's uh, what we've been voting against, that they actually be increased by 5%. For all the reasons that you mentioned there, uh, Mr. Mayor, the, when just talk, but also we have, we have things that we've brought into our core items, things at the library that we that are they're doing a fantastic job in, uh, whether it was resume writing, whether it's uh, children's <coughs> activities, everything else, that, that that's the type of thing that needs to be protected. And uh, and if it means taking more from area, and I know we're flush with money. We got a lot of hard times ahead, ahead. Uh, at least we should be planning on that. And the reason we are flush with money is because of some projects that simply just weren't done for, for various reasons that didn't get done that not to say that they shouldn't be done in the future they, they, I, I still think that there's not one that you can really take off the page especially when it comes to our infrastructure that money is going to be it's going to come in very handy in the near future um, it wasn't very long ago that uh, that we actually we were pretty poor and it, and that wasn't that long ago and uh, so I think we be very careful what we do with taxation but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of leaving everything as is, with the exception of that one classification, which I would actually see, like to see a 5% raise in it. I've I got an opinion on that too, and that's, that is, uh, is, we're all getting hurt. Industry is getting hurt. About the harder than a lot of, a lot of uh, even residential. There is industry really hurting out there, and, and some of those number companies are not number companies, some of those wells, now, they're, they're thrown by the GNRLs and that of the, of the world, and uh, they're they're having a tough time. And I really think this is this is a time to be to, to, to try and help this in industry as much as we can too. And uh, hey, uh, I know we can't do a whole bunch for mines and stuff like that, but we can do we can keep things zero so it looks like we're not. Looks like we at least got a conscience, and we know that the time is not right. And and I and I for one, if you don't want to talk to oil packs, the oil wells, and the oil pipelines around here, <clears throat> they've been here for a long time. They've been paying taxes for a long time. And at this point, I cannot justify in my own mind raising that just because well, there's uh, something we can do. I, I think uh, zero percent. Across the board, it says we're being fair. <coughs> Thank you, Worship. Actually, almost uh, I do agree with Mr. Mackay because you take the five percent, add it on to them, and take that off residential, and that kind of almost it's still a zero percent. Just it's increasing one of them. I mean, these guys went from twenty-one point three in twenty eleven down to one point three in twenty fifteen. But that's what the that's the difference was. Four years. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Wall, uh, are we still, as re as renters at residential, one of the lowest around our, our residential taxes? Mr. Wall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's uh, that's <coughs> one of the lowest. Sorry, are. I'm just checking up on, on something here but yeah we're one of the lower tax if not the lowest tax it's um it's really hard to compare across different municipalities because what other jurisdictions will often do will they'll hide their property taxes in the uh, utilities charges and Tumble Ridge doesn't do that so those straight up comparisons between the, the tax levy from Tumble Ridge versus a tax levy from another community even with that we're, we're lower but when you factor in all those other things that Tumble Ridge doesn't hide our taxes in utilities charges yeah, we're, we're very low and if nothing's changed from last year, then, then that would make us still the lowest because that, that's where we ended up last year when, when all these factors were put in place. Um, and just and when we say a zero increase, that is actually a decrease because all the costs have gone up. You know, so when we, when we used to keep it level, it's actually a decrease. <coughs> we used to, I give it one more, one more, just one more comment on this and then, uh, then I'm done. But, um, I have no problem with the zero percent increase in, in uh, residential, leaving it just as is, and as well as in them. But this this uh, this light industry again that that is they've actually gone down over the past little while. 
And as, as uh, Councillor Patelka pointed out, this isn't a big cash cow. There's not, there's not millions that's going to be coming in from this. It's actually fairly modest that would maybe pay a bill like, like the, uh, the, the maybe, maybe that would cover the library. Maybe it would cover like, what, what, uh, the museum, something like that. And again, it's, it's, it's one that's been, been kind of under the radar for, for so long. No, it's never been addressed. Uh, I know I've tried to address it in various uh, budget meetings, but um, never been successful, and I'm not holding out a whole lot of uh, confidence here tonight either. But uh, but I think it's something we have overlooked in the past, and, and uh, I'd like to give it a, another try. I was just going to call the question on the motion. Motion dies. Okay. Make another motion. I'd like to make a motion that the uh, the percentages for all classes, with the exception of uh, lay industry, remain the same, or uh, a zero increase, with the exception of lay industry, for an increase of uh, five percent. Sure. Why, why would we not talk about residential here? Like, why, why would we not have that discussion here next? Like, yeah. we're flush with cash. We, we all said it and everything you guys had to say. Five million dollars we didn't spend last year. Why take in, give them, a, give them half, give them a 50% break. Give the residents $300 less to have to pay on their taxes. Collect half a million dollars less. That's 10% of what we were surplus cash last year. That's, you know, we talk about hard times, like hard times are right now, not in the future. They may be in the future as well, but people are going through hard times right now. And this helps the residents of Tumblr Ridge now. The reason, the term you use is flush with cash. The reason we are flush with cash isn't from this year or last year, it's from previous councils saving money put money away for tough times. And just like you just said, the future, we don't know. It could get a lot worse. So we can't go blowing everything now and say, geez, I wish I hadn't done that. I'm not saying to blow everything now. I'm saying if you look at some of the forecasting, they, Jordan just said we're bringing $300,000 we're not expecting. It. <coughs> we did $450,000 in income, $450,000 in investment income that we weren't doing before <coughs> last year. We started that last year. And two million dollars from the Peace River Regional District. Maybe I'm the only one who sees it. I don't know. But to me, we have an opportunity to help people now, and and we can easily go and spend eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars on on grant and aid fee for service, and give all the residents money away to people like that, and and we can't look at giving them something, fifty percent break, you know, meet in the middle, do the Duran thing like she said there last week, meet in the middle, fifty percent. Thank you, Worship. <clears throat> this is a tough one, and and you know when you look at your residents and giving giving them a break, you know I think our fee for services and and everything we do within and, and that we have for services are <coughs> are the kind of the key to what makes us unique. And and we have money in the bank. We're tackling asset management this year. We're going to have the the efficiency review things start breaking down, that money is, that cushion that we're talking about could be gone next year or the year after. And and we have to be a re realistic, I, you know, $600, $300 to each of us is could be great, but it, it isn't the answer to, to solving this problem right now. I think the zero was the, it was the answer, maybe a slight here and there, but I think, I think we're doing our best to to bring people into the community with tourism. We're building on something, we're growing, we're, we're trying to be ahead of things. And, uh, and and the money spent there is hopefully money that's going to bring people in and that money will stay and, and make our downtown core and our businesses stronger. Uh, I, I can see where you're getting at, but I don't think it's the proper way. Just on that, you know, you're talking about going up by five percent to late industry, late industrial. You know, what's the chances of taking that five percent and taking it off residential? I mean, it's still got a motion on the floor. We'll get that. 
But we can friendly amend that motion as well. Yeah, I'll put it out there that we a friendly amendment if Councilor McKay would take that and reducing it the residential by five percent and increase by the district by five percent. Oh, you're doing Yes. Yeah, sorry, friendly amendments are actually a higher bar than a regular amendment. You need a unanimous consent of council for a friendly amendment, whereas a normal amending motion you only need a majority. Just just so council's aware. I, I think um, I think our our, uh, our tax rates, especially with residential, are, are fair. And I think that's that's the key. If they weren't fair, then then we should make a, we should make a change. And and one one thing about uh, being retired, you you gotta uh, doesn't matter whether you go to the post office, it doesn't matter where you go, you get an opportunity to talk to people. I haven't heard anyone. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I haven't heard too many people think a reduction is in order. If I think if we went to raise taxes, we'd have an uproar. The residential taxes, we'd have an uproar. But um, a lot, a lot of residents in Tumble Ridge, the same people that are going through some pretty darn hard times, are saying zero percent increase is fair. And and I and overwhelmingly, um, that is the that's the consensus. I, I don't know who you're talking to, but that's not the people that I'm talking uh, to. What what I'm what I'm hearing from people on the street is they're expecting a tax decrease because their their values of their houses went down. And I've been telling them on the street, that's not what's going to happen. We're going to increase the mill rate so that we get the exact same amount of taxes from you. People don't understand that. If they yep. honestly think <clears throat> that because their house is worth half of what it was or 40% less than what it was, that they think that they're paying less taxes. The, the common person out there, that, in my mind, that's what they think. And that's what I'm trying to uh, help them out with, is get to that point that they get an actual tax break because their house values are only $100,000, now, $130,000. Okay, we're going to call a question on this. Uh, all in favor? Motion that's on the floor. You want to repeat the motion? If you know <coughs> yeah, this motion would be to leave all tax, the average tax levy across all properties the same, with the exception of light industrial with a 5% increase to its average tax levy. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, uh, 4.2. coverage uh, tax bylaw sample. That's exactly just for information, I guess. That's, you correct. To that? nope. That's again just providing council with an idea of what the bylaw is going to look like at the end of this process. Okay. Uh, 4.3, which is uh, yes. just one thing. I thought we were going to change this to an Excel file and play with those numbers so we can see where the mill, the rates can be. Uh, 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 Councillor uh, Howell did. We were told up in front of me. Councillor Howell did. I asked if anybody wanted to see it, and there's nobody seemed to want it. Okay, uh, 4.3, the uh, birthday party will be closed. Recommendation. Uh, uh, Council approves the closure of Front Street on April 28, 2016, between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. to accommodate the block party event. And the Council direct staff to organize the closure of Front Street. You said, oh, the attached tire now. Seconder? Any discussion on it? All in favor? So then we'll take this to question and answer period. Yes. No, no, we didn't have a majority to bring the other one in. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, I guess I'm just laying it because I can't get it on one floor. How come? How come year after year after year there are millions of surpluses? Can it be better figured out what's needed, like from year to year? What, what, what's happening is projects don't get done, projects don't get started. We pay taxes on that. The following year, it's put in the budget. 
to get them done, done and finished, and we pay taxes on it again. Why can't we have a, a, like a tighter, you know, we like last year we paid taxes on $5 million of stuff that didn't get done. Now we're paying on it again because the projects aren't finished. Like, why can't it be figured out? This is what, like over the years you think you get more experience. Why can't we figure out better on how much money is needed instead of having these surpluses? We are work, we're working on that, and then hopefully our plan in this year is to accomplish everything we've, we've planned on in this budget. That, that's our plan. And, uh, <laughs> it's been like that for years already. I know, and uh, we're, we're working on it. I think, I think we've got a handle on it this year. And, uh, I guess we'll see at the end of the year. If. Okay, so in actuality, should we not have taken the amount of money from last year budget that went back into surplus of projects we didn't get done, shouldn't that money be taken out of this year's so taxes aren't paid on that amount again? Uh, I don't understand. Okay, so, okay, if we have a $15 million budget, okay, for projects and that, we get $10 million of that budget done. Okay, five million of that's going back into our surplus, which we've already paid tax dollars on because it was budgeted for that. And then we bring those projects forward the next year and bring that budget back up to 16 million, which you're paying taxes on again, which you paid taxes on that money already that was brought back to surplus and then it's brought forward again to tax again. I, I just don't understand that. That's been going on for so long and it's just not right. Uh, Mr. Wall, can you help me with that? Um, I mean, I can talk a little bit about the projects. Uh, Two million dollars of that was council initiatives that wasn't spent. Um, one part, one point, one point two million of that was the, the fire truck. So most of the money is, is just in those two projects there. Um, I'm not sure what class you're talking about when you're. I'm just talking overall budget period. Because if you if you're talking about residential taxes, I mean the residential taxes don't come anywhere close to, to paying for what we do in a year. If you're talking about the overall tax budget, then the overall tax budget. It's not just the residential paying taxes. It's industrial. It's like it's business. It's everybody. And if that if that million if, if you're saying we have a 16 million dollar budget, you're getting you're charging tax. You're doing your mill rate taxes on that, so you can have your budget balance, right? And then if that budget's balanced. You'd spend all that money, but if you don't spend all that money and put one, two, five, whatever million back into general revenue, you've already taken collected tax money on that the previous year. So if you take that money again and put it back into the next year's one and charge taxes on it again, you're double taxing it. All I can say is we will do our best to spend the money this year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can I ask a question? Then? A zero point zero percent increase. Show a little respect, though. Okay. I, I'm I, sure. don't, I, don't, I don't appreciate. I'm a taxpayer. I'm, I'm asking a question. Okay, we show doing. respect from this side. I appreciate it from that side. What have, Why haven't I shown respect? I'm just the, the gentleman you. sitting beside you there. <laughs> it, it's the same question every year. Like that's the pro, like. Can like, there anybody else want to ask a question, uh, Tim? You know, I'll play devil's advocate here because I have to agree with Councillor McKay as a taxpayer. Uh, I talk to lots of people every day too, and I for one am happy with leaving it at zero percent. I don't hear a lot of people saying, you know, the way I look at it, even if it was only three hundred dollars, that's a couple grocery trips or a couple tanks of fuel or whatever. I'd rather not have that decrease and maintain the same level of services we have and the capital projects that the district puts on every year. Um, I watched last uh, uh, budget meeting Tuesday night when I got home because I was delayed with the fires and I watched that and I heard some discussion on, you know, why do we put out all this money for grant and aid and fee for service. Uh, in my opinion, as a taxpayer and a citizen of Tumblr Ridge, I appreciate them things. There's a lot to be said for the quality of life we have here, whether it's Grizz Fest, whether it's clear trails to go out and ride on, a museum, whatever. I think uh, 
when I see Mr. Wall's presentation on the 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 budget and the 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 financial shape that the district's in, obviously that's something that we can afford. And I think the citizens of Tumbler Ridge appreciate that quality of life. When I see other districts only putting out one percent uh, to work fee for services and, and grant aids, I think the number was one percent that that you used on your presentation. I, I I mean I lived in Dawson Creek. We didn't have all these nice things that the district puts on or that the clubs around town put on. You know, if we cut that, you know, maybe the Lions wouldn't have free pancake breakfasts at Riz Fest and different things like that. I mean, people appreciate that stuff. So I'm, as a taxpayer in this town, I'm more than happy with the decision you made tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Can I, do you want me to just say a word here just regarding the tender of our budget? I would just like to read it well. Okay, right on. Uh, Trent, you got any questions? Okay, thank you. We needed a check for adjournment. Mr. Right. Junior, we're okay. All in favor? Thank you.